Hey, what up, fam? It's your boy Norm. I would like to welcome you to episode 52 of the Evangelical Norm. Uh, so today, um, talk a little bit about, as you can see, uh, again, I've been displaced from my usual spot. Um, you'll notice I am talking much quieter. Um, I'm upstairs in the kitchen and my daughter's asleep down the hall. So this will be a far more quiet um, evangelical norm than what is usual. I'm going to try really hard to um, keep an even uh, keel here and not get too passionate. But what I want to talk about is likely to make me make a little more noise. So hopefully you don't wake up my daughter and don't wake up my wife or anyone else in the house and make anyone else angry. <laughs> so um, any more than I already am. And I don't know that I'm angry, I'm sad. Um, I, I just, at the deterioration of evangelicalism, um, just all the things that have come up this week. Uh, Vicki Beeching's book came out, I believe, actually last week. I've been trying to read it, but it's, <laughs> it's hard to just even understanding the the fact that it is so clear that homosexuality is a sin and rather than adhere to the words of Christ who who called us to deny ourselves um her message is literally to deny Christ to indulge our flesh and fall away rather than deny ourselves and and follow Christ it is indulge our flesh and fall away um, trying to maintain some kind of attitude that you can still be a Christian and absolutely thumb your nose at God, um, who says that homosexual relationships are a sinful, just like any other extramarital, ex any other sexually immoral, any other sinful activity, you know. And then to see, and I don't know if, if, Looking at the facts, again, we want consistency in what we do, so we don't have anything um, that says Jay Givens has actually come out as gay, but he's absolutely come out as affirming um, LGBT, um, Vicky Beeching, the, these people who are claiming that it's okay to be gay and actively gay and Christian. Now, here again, we all deal with our temptations. We all deal with um, sin in our lives. And so whether that's same-sex attraction, whether that's opposite-sex attraction outside of marriage, whether that, whatever it is, um, we deal with it. And kleptomania, you name it, across the board, whatever it is, we deal with that. And Christ does call us to deny ourselves. As a heterosexual male who is married, I have to consistently resist the urge to look at other women who are not my wife on the computer, whatever, pornography. I have to deny that. And not even Vicki Beeching would deny that fact, that I have to suppress that because it is sinful. It is adulterous. She would agree. Um, it, even if I were single, it is adulterous to look at someone with lust who is not somebody that I'm married to. So I have to resist the urge to flirt with women who are pretty, who are not my wife, because I am sexually attracted to other women who are not my wife. But because of my love for Christ, my love for my wife, I resist those sins. I, I push those things away. I deny myself and follow Christ, first and foremost. So now we got, we've got Jay Givens, who is um, supporting these people as well. And, you know, the, the, the post that he put up, he's got the, the pride flag on his, his Twitter page. And um, there was a question someone asked him, are you gay, bro? And his answer was, yup. I don't know if that's true or not. I mean, whether that was just a facetious answer or whatever. 
you know, because again, somebody coming at you and saying, are you gay, bro? Who knows? So I can't say 100% that Jay Givens has come out as gay, but he's affirming them. We've got this whole thing going on right now with Andy Stanley, who thinks we need to unhitch the the Christianity from the Old Testament. Um, and I agree with Chocolate Knox on cross politics, on cross politic that um, this is really paving the way for them to affirm LGBT um, lifestyles, not just the people, because even at Refuge Church where we consistently preach every sin is a sin, no matter what it is, sexual immorality of all kinds, um, theft, greed, all these things are sin, and we preach that, but we would welcome anybody who is LGBT to come through those doors. We would love on them. We would give them coffee. We would talk to them. We would not treat them any different than any other non-believer who walks through those doors or any other false convert who walks through those doors, someone who believes that they're a Christian but doesn't actually have the, hasn't actually truly repented and put their faith in Christ. We welcome anyone into the doors at Refuge Church, but we consistently preach the gospel and what is and is not sin and the need to repent and put your faith in Christ. And so ultimately, we would welcome those people in. I don't know how comfortable they would be, but we have all this part of the church that is just trying to make them comfortable. They're trying to become friends with the world. And we should not do that. Jesus specifically told us not to become friends with the world. And, you know, they're going to hate us because they first hated him. And if we continue to get into this place where we want to be just make the world love us as Christians, then we're, we're deteriorating the message that Christ gave us. Um, I mean, I'm not saying to go out and intentionally be jerks. You know, spent Saturday evening down in Manti, Utah at the Mormon Miracle Pageant there to preach the gospel to people, to share the gospel with the LDS people. And I love my brothers that are out there that are, are doing what they do. But I think there are some that, that take it to a different level that is intentionally offensive that doesn't need to be. Specifically on the level of the nature of of the mormon god now we we come to the conclusion that yes we do believe in two different gods the mormons believe in a god who was a man like me um may have been you know on his planet maybe he did a podcast who knows but was a man just like me who had to earn his way to salvation and exaltation to become the god of this world and create all of us as, as spiritual offspring in our the pre-existence. This is, again, Mormon theology. Um, but there are guys that get up and, and do some open-air preaching, and they, and granted, yes, this is, according to the Mormon teachings, their God may have been a sinner on earth. And we can, specifically, we can just leave it at that. Your God is, may have sinned and the bible says that god is holy 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 he's never sinned he knows no sin and so but there are guys that will will take that to a whole nother level of offensiveness by proclaiming your god could have been a, a, a homosexual or your god could have been a pedophile i think that takes it and, and that defeats what we're trying to do again we it's such a fine line in preaching the gospel because the gospel is the cross is an offense to those who are perishing um it is a, a foolish message um and it's an offensive message to call somebody a, a sinner and call them to repentance will offend people um and so we want to be willing to let the cross offend but we don't need to be intentionally offensive um, beyond simply the message of the cross. I mean, it is sufficient to say your God that you believe in could have been a sinner. 
and I, I understand the shock value, but it shuts down conversation when you take it to a point where you're overly offensive for no good reason. Um, but we can't, in that same vein, we can't swing the pendulum the other way to where we're absolutely not offensive and all we want to do is make people feel comfortable and happy um, and if that means affirming their sin because what we're doing with them is we are we're, we're sending them into hell with um, a happy-go-lucky message from church you know we are we are literally deceiving those people if we continue to um, let them believe that they are saved in their sin. We are deceiving those people and literally to quote, uh, you know, if we're not willing to share the gospel with them and share the truth with them to quote Rick Warren, we're, we're literally telling them to go to hell. And now I'm going to probably get a lot of flack for quoting Rick Warren, but it was a great line out of, uh, the 40 days of purpose video that goes before that. If you're not willing to share the truth with your neighbor, if you're not willing to share the truth with a stranger, you're literally telling them to go to hell. If we are willing to tell LGBT people who are living in this lifestyle, who are not resisting the urge to sin, who are not struggling against their sin, we are, and if we're letting them come into the church and, and feel like they don't have to repent and they don't have to turn from their sin and they don't have to turn from the sinful lifestyle, we're literally telling them to go to hell. We're literally being as hateful as we possibly can under the guise of worldly love. And we can't do that anymore. We cannot stand for that. We have to get out there and preach the gospel. We have to get out there and call people to repentance. And, and not in, in a, a Westboro Baptist way or a whole overly intentional uh, offensive way. Because Westboro Baptist doesn't call to repentance. They just condemn. So there is a fine line in there. But there is a happy medium where we can go and we can share the gospel. You know, if I just go out... And, and and I was like this for a long time, coming out of the Mormon church. I was so angry with Mormonism that all I wanted, I didn't care about, I literally did not care about the souls of the Mormon people. I just wanted to destroy Mormonism. And in that, I, I was willing to be as ugly as I possibly could be. And God really took me, God took me away from here to temper the zeal that I had with some love for all people. Not just love for the Mormon people, but love for all people. A desire to see all people saved. And in that, in bringing me back, it changed my attitude towards repentance. I, I, I never wanted to go out and, you know, show off the Mormon garments. You know, I don't believe they're sacred. I don't believe, you know, but I, and I don't believe that they're, we should protect them in any way. But I don't think to, to flaunt them and just make the Mormon people mad is necessary either. You know, I truly want to get out there and just, I want to be as friendly and as amicable as possible to open up the door for as many conversations as possible. Because the more people I can talk to, the more seeds that I can plant. I really don't feel like just, I mean... Granted, truth, the Bible says that God's word does not return void. And so anytime the gospel is preached, I, I think there is a possibility of a seed being planted. No matter what the method of it being preached, no, no matter how offensive. But I think the root can take... Uh, man, it's so it's so... It's such a fine line to walk because I, I think that in intentional offensiveness will kill the root of the seed. Well, you're, you're throwing out a dead seed um, or a dying seed or a seed wrapped in rock that has to, that seed itself, and I'm not saying that God can't do it, and he has, and he will, 
but that seed it, it takes so much more to break through the the rocky offensiveness intentional offensiveness that it's been wrapped up in than if we just throw the seed itself if we have opportunity to just speak in a a adult manner and granted i mean i failed uh there's or aaron posted a, a picture of me talking to two guys and i got loud and i got irritated um with the way they were coming back at me i got off into the weeds i got away from the gospel initially i did manage to bring it back um but it was it was not um not the way i wanted it to it, it got a little heated um more than i wanted it to not 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 really in a bad way but just loud um and which i do anyway but um it could have been a little more adult even on my part so i'm not proclaiming myself to be the perfect evangelist but i'm saying these are the better ways to evangelize these are i think my personal opinion and and again everybody has their 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 freedom to evangelize the way they will but i really feel like god has has laid out that that it yeah it's just easier i think the the seeds are easier to plant if we are not intentionally offensive and we'll just put it at that so um but again we're just seeing so much of uh you know the uh southern baptist convention um and the the conflict that is going on and, and todd frill just did a, a video earlier this week i think or last week about the coming storm of the divide within evangelicalism and that dividing storm and as specifically within reformed theology um is racial relationships and again on the same thing i think part of the deterioration of evangelicalism is our deterioration of uh racial um peace i guess um we've become so polarized in uh that we tend to we immediately and my wife and i were talking about this that um we immediately respond uh, to to a challenge um in a self defensive way and and then again i'm speaking as from white perspective um you know anytime and i've seen it in uh in different writings and so on that immediately whenever and and granted here let me lay a foundation i don't believe that we need to be feel guilty for um personally any white person alive today needs to feel guilty for any sin other than their own we don't need to be i don't need to atone for the the racists of my ancestors or the past i do not believe uh that my grandparents were complicit in in any racial um discord unless of course they were actively racist and i don't know you know but um there's been charged vocabulary coming from the african-american community um that uh immediately white evangelicalism responds with um almost a self-defensive mode no that's not me rather than uh recognizing i i understand that there's hurt coming from my black brothers and sisters there is hurt there we're we're seeing things that are obviously laid out on a racial scale right now um that from that community from our black brothers and sisters there is hurt whether you know us as white evangelicalism is responsible for it or not we have to recognize it as in as much as if it were the the other way around i would expect my black brothers and sisters to immediately if there were hurt or something coming from the white community that they would react with with love towards us first 
before defending themselves. And that's what I'm seeing. Um, and I think it, it does come into the fact that that much of the church has, has walked away from strictly preaching the gospel into, you know, we get into these, these the weeds in, in other areas. Um, when, uh, like discernment ministries and stuff like that, I've always said, you know, discernment ministries have to be very careful with where they are going because what is bound to happen, I mean, you can have a legitimate discernment ministry that is legitimately targeting false teachers and false prophets, whether that be prosperity, gospel, or whatever, but they generally, if they're not kept in check, you're going to move that focus of discernment to orthodox brothers and sisters, and you're going to discern secondary issues, and we see that happening too. So there's so many things on so many levels, and again, I can see it, and I'm looking at it, and I'm, I'm grieving about it, but knowing that the only solution, there's only one solution, and that is to come back to the preaching of the gospel to each other, to ourselves most of all. Because I I have to preach the gospel, gospel to myself every day to prevent me from reacting in, um, I wanted to say derogatory, but that's not the word I'm looking for, um, deficient ways, you know, to, to react instinctively on a defensive level in any way rather than reacting on a I just want to love on you level and with homosexuals loving has to be look like preaching the gospel calling to repentance with racial discord and racial issues it has to be first and foremost loving on those who are feeling hurt and then waiting for all the facts of a situation to come out, whether it's a police shooting or, you know, two guys being arrested in a Starbucks, you know, immediately rather than defending the Starbucks, which is what a lot of white people did. Um, we should look at our, our black brothers and sisters and go, I can see how you feel slighted. Let's wait for all the, the, you know, we love you. We're, we're weeping with those who weep. We're standing with you. Um, we're waiting for all the facts to come out. In the Starbucks case, it came out that it was, I firmly believe it was the, the racist attitude of a girl who everyone was like, but she was a social justice warrior. Well, even social justice warriors can be a little racist. And she was a little racist that day. Um, and reacted to a couple of black guys in a horrible way that ended with them in handcuffs simply because they were waiting for a friend um, and wanted to use the bathroom. And so we have to we have to look at stuff. Consistency is absolutely something that that has to come back into our our worldviews. We cannot. I mean, I posted today a thing about you know. Sarah Huckabee Sanders was asked to leave a restaurant in Virginia the other day simply because she works for Donald Trump. And so the meme was, so let me get this straight. Um, the left is going to throw a fit because a, a bakery will not bake a cake, but yet a restaurant can kick out um, Sarah Huckabee Sanders and they're all fine with it. We have to have more consistency. It's the drum that I beat almost every week when I talk about this stuff. We have to see more consistency. We have got to let the Holy Spirit cause us to look at things not as Republicans, not as Democrat, not as the right, not as the left, but we have to look at it as blood-bought, saved by the grace of God Christians. And that means looking at things absolutely differently. That means immediately reacting with love rather than defense. It means immediately reacting with truth rather than comfort. Uh, and so 
And again, I, I don't have any formulaic answers on how we can do that other than preaching the gospel to ourselves, believing what Jesus has said and what the Bible teaches, being willing to share that with others, um, and standing firm on that faith. And, you know, that's, that's what Jesus said. He said, by this they will know that you are my disciples, that you love one another. And there's far too much going on right now in the evangelical church that we are not loving one another. We are not loving our our minority or our brothers and sisters of other races that are feeling discriminated against, that are feeling oppressed, that are feeling these things, whether we believe that it's true or not. We should be, we are not loving them in the way that we should uh, by automatically putting up our defenses of, I don't want to be offended by what you're saying. Does that make sense? We are not loving our homosexual brothers and sisters by allowing them to continue on living in active sin. We're not loving each other. We're not loving our neighbor by letting them wallow in unrighteousness. And we are not loving our brother by defending ourselves first and foremost. 26 minutes of a podcast, and it really could have been boiled down to that. By this you will know that you are, they will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And the discord that is, is flowing through evangelicalism right now is bearing a testimony to the world that that Christianity is dying, that Christianity is floundering. And we know that's not true. The gates of hell will not prevail against his church. I know there will remain a, a remnant that will will re, will stand strong, will stand firm in in a consistent Christian worldview, and will continue to love their brothers to love our neighbors as ourselves, to love the Lord our God with all our heart and soul, mind and strength, to love one another and love our neighbors as ourselves. So I'll leave you with that for whatever good it does. Um, and as usual, as always, preach the gospel at all times, use words, they're necessary. Until next week, Soli Deo Gloria.